I don't think people realize just how important this event was. The Naru didn't want to convert Illidan because they wanted a light demon hunter. No, they got plenty of powerful weapon in their arsenal. They knew about the prophecy, about the what is to come, about the World Soul Saga, and they wanted one of the main players on their side for this ultimate battle. With the Titan arrival confirmed soon, so get us an Illidan are coming back, no doubt, as well as the ultimate and final battle of the Light and the Void. And would it not be amazing for the Light to have one of the main players as one of their pawns? The lead Naru Zera was so desperate about this mission and trying to convert him that she sacrificed herself, but even though that time failed, they still got a few light pawns on Azeroth already. Why was Illidan called the child of the light and the shadow, the prophecy, and what would happen if Illidan really was converted because literally everything would be so different? Did you know you can play WoW on your phone? You can check in on your characters, you can play the game, you can even do minor things you don't really want to do on the PC. With this video sponsor, Awesen, allowing you to control your PC with your phone completely free, available for Windows, iOS, and Android. Awesen is incredibly easy to use. Check out my link in the description, download the PC and the phone version, and just connect it. The free version itself is amazing, as you can control your desktop, transfer files, but the real deal is the game version. It has custom keyboards for various games, other than just WoW, and you can enjoy AFK Gaming at any time, anywhere with Game Sound. Make sure to use my code Doron to get 7 days completely free, only for the first 200 people. They also got a smart plug to turn off your PC at any time, as well as hot sales with up to 40% off on Pro and Game versions. Check out Awesome! The most important thing I want you to understand with this iconic Zera Light Illidan reforging scenario, the very iconic cinematic, was that with the World Soul Saga and us knowing what is to come and the Light Void battle that is imminent, the battle that was claimed by Chris Madsen to be like the ultimate showdown set to happen on Azeroth soon, it obviously shines a different light upon this event, literally. Previously, the idea was that Zera was trying to turn him into an empowered soldier, a really strong weapon for the Light Army, but wouldn't be taken recent happenings into account midnight and the last titan there is almost certainly something much much bigger at play here so a super quick background of the event itself is that the light army and zera in particular were super like super desperate to get illidan lore wise they were nearing the brink of destruction and zera saw illidan as like the ultimate savior the prophecy that would change everything she called him the child of the light and the shadow the light mother zera literally sent out her own heart into as in order to get him, so you can understand that this was a significant act of desperation, like last resort type thing. Now, you may be thinking, I mean, really? I mean, Illidan is a pretty powerful guy, but he's not like the world soul of Azeroth, he's not Sargeras or anything on a crazy cosmological power level. I mean, imagine if a titan was willing to sacrifice himself in order to just get some guy from Azeroth, you would think that guy was a pretty big deal in the grand scale of cosmological things. In fact, there's so many more powerful or just as powerful figures on Azeroth itself that could be used for the exact same purpose if the purpose was a weapon. So the Prime Naru, one of the ultimate leaders of the Light as a cosmological force, decides to personally come down and ultimately even sacrifice herself for this purpose. She must have known something that we don't or something that we didn't know until now. I want to introduce one thing into the conversation here that is going to be a huge reveal on what her line of thinking was and that is one word, prophecy. If you notice something that is really iconic with the light that always comes back and back again, it is that they have this strange obsession with predicting the future and they're sort of successful about it. I mean, you know what Velen is called? A prophet? That is something he got through his time with the Naru. Now, while there is a theory that the light might have worked together with someone like Ammon Tool of the Titans that had granted them powers of this sort, sort of similar to what he might have given to Primus in the past, I don't necessarily think the Naru are actually like really capable of fully predicting the future. I do think they have a sort of a vague superpower to do something like this, but it isn't really fully accurate, but they believe in it like 100%, so sometimes the future does actually get fulfilled. That is why the light is so fixated on one single vision, on one single truth. However, if we do take their fortune telling skills into account and we take them for granted and we say they are accurate, you can kind of see here that Zera was actually genius, as in she totally saw the world soul saga coming. We know for a fact that 
the Titans are coming to Azeroth in the last Titan with Illidan and Sargeras that are going to play a huge role in like the ultimate battle that he's been building up and if one of these major players was a light pawn you can see that it will be a really big asset to the light as a cosmological force in fact such a big asset that the prime now decided to actually sacrifice herself to try and achieve this goal quick the crash here i know you may be thinking like there is no way blizzard really thought about this 10 years ago and they're really in on this long game and i do kind of agree i mean they may be trying to tie it together now but what is also interesting is that chris madsen left around this time when zero was relevant and when this entire story was written and it seems like he is the actual brain behind the world soul saga as the lead narrative guy now and the entire world soul saga really seems like a sequel to legion so it is possible that these were some of his original ideas of how he saw the future of warcraft that ultimately unfortunately ended up going the shadowlands route but I digress. The other really important thing you can tie in with Tilden as a light pawn is the really popular theory right now, and that is that the light already has two other pawns planted on Azeroth. You can check out my full videos on the details here, but with the events that happened in the past two years, it is really, really interesting, intriguing that the two main Horde and Alliance characters that are controlling the south and the northern part of the eastern kingdoms, where the light and the void will soon come, are all light figures. Kalia and Terrellian. The most important point here is that these two leaders are not light followers, they're not paladins, they're not priests or anything of the sort, they are light forged. Terrellian essentially died, was light forged, and that is what is keeping him alive, and Kalia Manatil was the only ever undead created by the light. A powerful Naru literally can pick her, decided to resurrect her to Anduin. Interesting enough, the only ever Naru we know of that reverted from the void cycle back to the light and turning back to a Naru again. So if we take the light's fortune telling skills into account, is it really so outrageous to say that they knew these two characters would come into position of power only a few short years later which is why they decided to implant their agents here would you not want two major leaders to be your puppets if you know something big is happening especially two major leaders on the continent where the invasion is set to happen you really want someone that has access to the ground forces that can support the invasion from that side additionally the recent 10.2.5 hints show that Andrian seems to be sort of hiding from the alien which furthermore adds on to this theory so if we do see a plan like this is actually true what would happen if back in legion illidan didn't break free from the light chains and destroy zera but instead he actually accepted the gift before we get into illidan the main thing to keep in mind is that zera would of course still be alive one of the main light leaders if not the main one and also the more fanatical side and it is likely by this current point in time, what you've seen the more fanatical side of the light as well. It is also possible that she might have played a more direct role in the defeat of Sergeras and that the events would turn out completely differently, making it really impossible to predict at this point in time. However, on the side of Illidan, personally, event-wise, I don't think that much would really change. I think the Legion would still be defeated, possibly in a different way. Sergeras would still be in prison, but some big things really do come into question. First of all, what is certain? Illidan would be purified by the light. He would no longer have his demon hunter powers he couldn't use spell magic and would be a completely different character but that isn't some groundbreaking thing i mean it's not like illidan was the one that first defeated sergeras or that his personal power was really that relevant to the grand scheme of things the real question is would the titans allow illidan to become the jailer if he was light forged and a light agent and that is such a difficult thing to answer right now because we never really knew the connection between these two cosmological forces some say they're allies so if that is the case it would happen but if not if they were new neutral they might not want a light agent so close to the seat of the pantheon and so close to sergeras one of the things people have talked about is that illidan would not even be a jailer at all and instead he would essentially be used as an azeroth's version of irel remember irel that turned alternate randor into a huge base for the light army that completely conquered the planet but i wouldn't see such a fanatical invasion happening immediately if you read the lore about how alternate randor was conquered it wasn't really overnight it took many years and it happened in a ton of subtle ways so in the case he wasn't the jailer of Sergeras, my best guess is that he would be a figure something akin to Terrellian and he would be yet another powerful potential pawn on Azeroth that could be turned in the ultimate battle that is to come eventually you know they would start slowly pumping the light propaganda until it is time for the big things and I think they would all be assisted by Zera directly which 
is of course a huge thing. Still, I don't think Zera was aware of the light in the void battle that will happen at midnight and she would have really sped things up. However, if Illidan did remain as the Jailer, things would be so different. As I said, when it comes to the plans of Zera and their predicting abilities, I don't really think Sergeras was the big player here. It isn't Sergeras why she called him the child of the light in the shadow, but she knew about the void, aka the shadow battle that is to come at midnight and the ultimate arrival of the titans and the world soul and all these crazy things that are going to happen. This is really what the light army was about. We, as the players, as the mortals, saw the defeat of Sergeras and the Legion as some big crazy event that saved the universe because that is what it was in our eyes, they were saving the world. However, for these cosmological players that have been living for hundreds and thousands of years, if not millions, this was literally just another battle, a stepping stone in the grand scheme of things. I mean, even Sergeras was aware of this, which is what caused him to stab Azeroth, but that is a topic for another video. In regards to the light, they knew Sergeras' defeat was imminent and they want to bank in on real estate on Azeroth and preparing for the real battle that is yet to come. Now, of course, if Light Illidan is the Jailer, it is nearly impossible to predict it at this point in time because so many crazy things are going to happen in Midnight and the Last Titan, but I'd imagine having someone really close to the Seed of the Pantheon, someone really close to Sargeras, would be a huge asset. They might have even tried to Light Purify Sargeras himself and then turn him into a Light Weapon. Personally, I don't think it would be impossible, although it does sound a little bit outrageous. I mean, sure, he's a crazy powerful guy, but through years of prison, he would have lost a lot of his power. The Feld might have left him, it dissipated, and he would be on a scale just large enough where he could actually be converted. Still, just this one single event of Illidan actually accepting the gift, as they call it, would be a huge change to the entire Warcraft universe. Not necessarily when it comes to the Legion or the defeat of Sargeras, but what is yet to happen, and I think soon we are going to find out. Thank you for watching, check out the main whispers, the predicted world of saga by clicking on the screen and check out my video in each of the colonies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!